let's go over the 10 commandments of fiddly fig care. Now, if you can remember these 10 things and take care of these 10 items, you will have a green and gorgeous plant for years to come. So I think the, the most important thing is to provide proper drainage. This is, you know, I talked about the root being the most important thing in a fiddly fig, the root system. And the most important thing for a healthy root system is having good drainage. We have developed a system that is really foolproof and I'll tell you what it is. So first you have a pot with a large drainage hole, at least one large drainage hole. The second thing is we have developed this houseplant smart gravel that goes in a single layer at the bottom of your pot. This is really, really important to lift up the root system and allow for airflow and to allow for your roots to dry out a bit at the bottom. Okay, so let's talk about soil. Fiddly figs, like I said, they like a really light soil. They like their roots to be able to grow very quickly throughout the soil to support fast growth up top in their leaves. And so I recommend a really porous, light, fast draining soil. You could take a regular soil for houseplants and mix in bark or cactus soil, maybe a 50-50 ratio, or we've actually developed a fiddly fig potting soil that works really, really well for these plants. So it helps defend against things like root rot or brown spots. It is sort of the optimal fast draining solution for plants. It has some nutrients in it. So it has ingredients like compost, bark, biochar, perlite, and it's all mixed together to be able to, you know, give your fiddly fig a really good experience. Okay, so the second commandment of fiddly fig care is probably the most important, and that's don't drown them. So many people try to kill their plants with kindness and what they do is they just water them too often and too much and the plants literally just drowned because their roots cannot get access to that oxygen and the nutrients that they need. Another problem if you water too much is uh, harmful bacterial and fungal organisms can start growing in your soil and if your soil never dries out it can cause bacterial root rot and fungal root rot which can kill your plants in you know 48 hours to a week. So you really want to be careful not to overwater your fiddly figs. Okay, so the third commandment of fiddly fig care is to give them lots and lots of light. I really recommend putting these plants in the sunniest area of your house, especially when you first bring them home, because what happens is when they're grown, they're grown in about 50% sunlight. So the greenhouses where they're grown have about 50% sunlight, which is actually quite a bit. An average house typically has about 25% sunlight. So you're already bringing your plant home and cutting its sunlight in half, and then you may be overwatering it, causing other problems. So at least for the first month, put your plant in the sunniest place that you can. Outside under a pergola is going to be a great place depending on the weather. Uh, you don't want to put them outside if it's too, too cold, but you know, you can acclimate your plant by putting it in a very, very sunny spot. And then after a month, moving it to a less sunny spot and then an even darker spot. And they do acclimate over time. I have a fiddly fig indoors that's in a very dark corner and it's doing fine because I took a long time to move it there. Um, you know, it's not giving me robust growth but it's still thriving and staying its own size. Um, you know, if I wanted it to grow, I'd probably want to give it more light. But if you're happy with the size and you slowly acclimate your plant into a corner that doesn't have a lot of light, you could still be successful. You're just going to want to pull back on the watering if you're not giving it a ton of light. All right, and commandment number four is to accept the loss of older leaves. Now, I know it's very easy to panic if you see a leaf drop from your fiddle leaf fig, but it's actually completely normal. And let me just distinguish between normal leaf drop and problematic leaf drop. So normal leaf drop means that the leaves are dropping from the bottom of your plant. So the older leaves are dropping, and that just allows your plant to grow taller, to have a trunk like a tree and to devote more energy to the newer growth on the top of the plant. The second thing you wanna look for is that the drop leaves are free of brown spots. So if your plant is dropping leaves that have brown spots, that could be a problem. But if they're just dropping normal, sort of like green or greenish yellow leaves, that's completely normal, so don't worry about that. In some ways, that's actually a good thing if leaves are dropping because it means your plant is probably growing taller and putting more energy into getting bigger. So just keep an eye out for insects, holes, or brown spots and problems like that before you panic. All right, so the fifth rule of fiddly fig care is to give them humidity. Now they don't like to be very dry and if you put them in a very dry, particularly dry and cold location, they can start dropping leaves and drying out. So the ideal humidity for a fiddly fig is between 30 
and 65%. And most of our houses are, you know, around 50%, but that's something you're really gonna wanna check because it varies depending on when you, where you live, what season it is, how often you use your air conditioning or your heater. So the higher the humidity, the better. Um, you're gonna wanna try to get a humidifier. If you live in a place with very low humidity, you can get a humidifier to increase your hum humidity in your house. So I did a little test in my home and I live in sort of desert-like conditions in San Diego and our humidity was running about 40%. So I actually got a whole house humidifier and now we run it 50% or greater, which is a huge difference for my plants. So it's actually good for us too, for our skin, for our uh, nasal passages, our lungs. And so you can really increase the humidity of your entire house by installing a whole house humidifier. And that was one of the major upgrades that I made to my home last year. And I really have been enjoying it. All right, so the next commandment I wanna talk about is treating any problems in a hurry. Now it's really, really important because problems like root rot can kill your plant within a matter of days or weeks. So as soon as you see a problem with your plant, you're gonna to wanna to act quickly because once these leaves are damaged with brown spots or dropping leaves, they're not gonna grow back. You're gonna to have to start over with new leaves and it can take a long time. So if you start seeing things like brown spots or black spots on your plant, or if you start seeing dropping leaves, I recommend using our root supplement. This is something that will kill any bacterial or fungal root rot and it gives a boost to your plant's root system that allows it to use its own immune response to fight off any pathogens. It's easy to use, there's no mixing, there's no mess. You just put a few drops or a teaspoon into water and then water your plant and within 24 hours your plant will be protected against root rot and will start to bounce back. All right, so commandment number seven is repot when necessary. So if you don't ever want your plant to get bigger, you don't have to repot, but it eventually will be drained of nutrients and the soil will be depleted. So you do have to fertilize if you want it to stay healthy. But if you want your plant to grow bigger, I recommend repotting at least once a year. Usually in the springtime is the best time to repot. And I recommend going two to four inches increase in diameter. So you, if you have a plant, say in a eight inch pot, you could go in a 10 to 12 inch pot to give it enough you know, space to grow. Um, but you wouldn't want to go too big because what that what that causes is basically for your plant to sit and stay too wet, which can increase the risk of root rot. And so you want to kind of size up slowly each year for kind of optimal growth and then make sure to keep fertilizing as you do so. And of course, use a really good soil. So you'll notice that, you know, the root systems of fiddly figs can grow really, really quickly and they can fill up the pot. So if you notice roots coming out of the surface or if you take it out of the pot and you can see your entire pot is roots, it's time to size up and to repot your plant. So speaking about growth and repotting, it's really important if you want your fiddly fig to grow bigger, which most of us do, you really need to feed your plant and they need a lot of fertilizers because of their large leaves and their large root systems. So we have developed a fiddly fig fertilizer. You know, you could probably use any balanced fertilizer, but we know that the specific nutrition requirements of a fiddly fig is a 312 NPK ratio. So we've developed our fiddly fig fertilizer where you can use it every single time you water. I believe that that's important because a lot of times if you use a non-soluble fertilizer, you can risk burning your plant's root system. So what that means is that you don't know how much fertilizer is in the soil. And if you use a slow release fertilizer, you don't know when to fertilize again. And if it builds up in the soil, it can burn your root system and cause your plant to have problems and to actually grow slower. And so by using a fertilizer that you use every single time you water, our liquid fertilizer removes the risk of burning your plant and you always know that you're gonna you know use it every single time you water and your plant's gonna get that slow dose of nutrition instead of maybe feasting on Thanksgiving and then not eating the rest of the year which isn't going to support optimal growth so that's why I think it's, this is my favorite way to fertilize is to use a very gentle fertilizer that's the proper NPK for your fiddly fig and to use it consistently year-round all right, so step number nine is to use the proper tools. I think that if you use the better tools that are designed for your particular plant, you can have a better experience. And we have a couple of accessories I wanna show you. The first are our houseplant pruning shears. So if you're thinking about pruning your fiddly fig to give it the perfect shape, or if you wanna prune and propagate your plant, you're gonna to wanna to check out something very sharp that has um, you know, an elegant handle that's gonna cut through and not crush the stem, but gonna make a very sharp, sterile cut. 
Another tool that I really, really love that I think is absolutely necessary, especially if you're a beginner or if you tend to overwater, is this three-in-one soil probe. So this measures the moisture, the acidity, and the light at the location of your plant. So you can see how wet your soil is, and I have a whole video on this if you're interested, but you stick it in, you can see how wet the soil is at various depths, and that can give you a lot of information about whether you're overwatering or whether it's time to water. It also can tell you the pH of your plant, so whether your plant soil is getting too acidic, which you're going to want to correct. And then it can tell you how much light your plant is getting, which is important. If you think maybe it's getting a lot of light, but it's not reading that it is, you may want to move it to a sunnier location. So this soil meter comes with instructions specific to a fiddle leaf fig. So I highly recommend it. It's just a really, really good tool to help you grow that confidence. All right. So the 10th commandment is to respect fiddle leaf fig Friday and check on your plant at least once a week. So we talked about bonding with your plant, getting to know your plant, getting, you know, growing your intuition about caring for your plant. I recommend setting one day a week. We call it Fiddly Fig Friday, and you can use that hashtag to share your plant with us on Instagram. But just check in once a week with your plant. What does it look like? Does it look thirsty? Does the soil look wet? Does it look dry? Is it, you know, does it have any insect damage? Are there dropping leaves? You know, how happy does your plant look? Is it dusty? Just kind of give it a good once over and a good grooming and uh, water if necessary once a week. And by kind of building this into your routine, you're going to be able to catch problems a lot earlier. You're going to build a better relationship with your plant. You're gonna have a happier, healthier plant. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.